Online Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Daniels, here for a Spotlight On with... Vine star slash YouTube star, uh, Paige Kennedy. <laughs> What's up, Ash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. <laughs> this is so cool. I love having people that are on Vine, that are on YouTube, that are that are doing so many cool creative things that people are watching all day long on the show because I want to pick your brain. Hey, pick my brain. <laughs> my brain is for the picking. Let me get a spoon. Okay, let's start picking. <laughs> um, but I do want to start in the beginning because I find that to be the best place to start. And I, I do want to know uh, just, like, where you came from, like, what your family was like, just a little bit about, like, I mean, did you ever think that you were going to do what you're doing today? Like, oh, give me man. a little bit about like your uh, background. Uh, you got time? <laughs> yep. No, Clock well, starts now. <laughs> well, um, I'm from Detroit. You know, I was, I was born and raised in Detroit, and just like most kids in Detroit, I I grew up with a dysfunctional family in uh, uh, the very tough neighborhood, um, and I didn't know that I was going to do this. My dad was a doctor who turned a uh, teacher and, you know, he wanted me to follow in his fo his footsteps. But probably from the age of like seven, I knew I wanted to be an entertainer because like Michael Jackson was my hero. And I just wanted to, I wanted to have the effect on people that he had on me and all of the people I see. Like I, I, I showed my son on YouTube yesterday, uh, that Michael Jackson was like the only person that I can think of that had like just hundreds and hundreds of people lose their shit like they faint like how do you how do you like be at a concert and you just love someone so much that they just do a move and you like ah I'm gone <laughs> like how do you did, did he just hit a note that was just so cold you just had to say fuck it right <laughs> and, exactly you know, and and so I I I wanted to. I wanted to have that effect, and plus I love him so much, and so he, you know, uh, there was a movie called The Wiz that he played the Scarecrow in. Mm -hmm. It's the Black Wizard of Oz, for those of you oh, who are uncultured. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't seem like Ashley has seen this movie. Uh, maybe I haven't, but I'm that. always open to seeing new movies, especially <laughs> Wizard of Oz type of movies. Yeah, so it's called The Wiz. It stars uh, Michael Jackson as a Scarecrow and Diana Ross as Dorothy. And oh, that that's movie, awesome. Yeah, that I love movie, her. like, that made me say, I want to be an actor. And so I started rapping, you know, at seven. And throughout college, I, I went to college and, and I thought I was going to be a football player. And I played for a little bit, but I just got into theater because I knew theater or the yes. best training. But yeah. now, I just want to go back to when you were seven, because wasn't that the time where your brother, did your brother introduce you to rap? Is that he the first person to kind of? Yes. My brother was 10 years older than me, so he was 17, and, you know, this is back in the Curtis Blow days, you know, uh, Run DMC was coming in, and he was, like, totally into the whole hip-hop scene, and obviously, you know, I'm a little kid, so the only thing I see is what my brother's playing right. and what he's showing me and introducing me. And I was like, I want to do that, too. You know, yeah, and it started so cool. in elementary school and just kept working his way up. And he was your, he's your only sibling? No. Okay, you have other siblings. Yeah, I have other siblings, okay. but it's, it's weird because it's like I got siblings from my dad's side and my mom's side. That's not I, weird. That's cool. Well, that's I only have one sibling. If she fails me, I have no one. <laughs> you have many more. Yeah, but you have like, you guys share a mom and dad. I don't have a brother uh, yeah. or sister that yeah, share both. It's not that great. You're not oh, missing out on that much. Right, it's still, cool. it, it's kind of cool actually not having that because then you kind of, I don't know, you can learn more from each other. You can be like more friends yeah, slash different. siblings. And like, and like my brother, he's light skinned, so he's, he's mulatto. Like, he's oh, mom's okay. White. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. That's a cool. That's a cool upbringing. I'm glad I asked that question. Then. <laughs> All right. So now we have you in college. You decide to study theater. Yeah. 
That is, that's interesting. Now, was that something, going from rap to theater, I mean, I'm sure all of the classes you were taking were more, I mean, like, was it like musical theater? Like, no. Were, were you like, feather on the roof over there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, what happened was, I went to a community college first to play okay. football. I got cut. And I was like, hey, do you guys have a, a movie major? <laughs> And they were like, no, we don't have a movie major. We have a theater major. And I was like, okay, well, that's probably where the best actors start anyway. So I got in the theater, and then I ended up going to the best school in Michigan for theater, which was Western Michigan University. And I got into Shakespeare there, and I loved Shakespeare. He became my favorite playwright. No so then when I way. went to graduate school, I, I went to a graduate school that like concentrated on the classics. So I went to the University That's so of Delaware. Cool. You went from rap to football yeah, right? to, to theater. Shakespeare. <laughs> That's Shakespeare. Hey, look, I, I, I made a complete circle you did. because at first, you did. at first, I didn't understand Shakespeare. I didn't get it. I didn't understand. I was like, I don't talk like this. I don't blah blah blah. And my teacher was like, Listen, Shakespeare was the first rapper because you know a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff is in verse, and I didn't see it that way and, until he told me that, and that changed everything. So. I mean, he is, it's, it's hard enough to even understand what he's saying. I mean, I, I didn't do very well in that department in school. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about, well, man? Can we please? Great. You know, the, the stories that Shakespeare wrote are great, and I feel like they're still relevant now. Like, I feel like, you know, you betrayal, love, revenge, that stuff is never going to get old. That's mm -hmm. going to stay for the remainder of time. So n no matter what year it is, there is still revengeful people. There's still love. There's still hate. There's still, you know, uh, the stuff that he dealt with. He's pretty timeless. And this is getting very deep, by the way. Sorry, I'm really liking this. No, I'm liking this. <laughs> I'm this is awesome. I did not think you'd open up like this. This is great. <laughs> I, I, I bet a lot of the people that are watching that are uh, that are huge fans of you on like Vine and everything, they're probably like, whoa. This is really cool. I, this is a side of him I didn't know, I know about. They were like, why is he so calm? <laughs> when is he going to uh, just jump up and scream? Oh, God. Mic? When's uh -oh. that going to happen? Is it, what's his name? Who did that on Oprah? Um, Tom Cruise. Oh, Cooper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, jump he jumped on the, on the couch. I'm going to jump on y'all. love yeah, the couch. It's all right. You can do it. Okay, so now you studied. You went to grad school, too, right, for theater? Yeah. Okay. I went to graduate school at the University of Delaware for Shakespeare. Okay, um, that's really and cool. And I studied there. And then I ended up leaving there early to come to Los Angeles because they were teaching me to do great plays with great words on great stages, not to come fuck it up in Hollywood. <laughs> Those were their words. And for me, I already knew since I was a kid I wanted to be a movie star. So I was, I was basically in that school preparing myself to go do theater when I knew that I wasn't going to go do theater. I knew that my next stop was Los Angeles. So I would have right. been, I would have just stayed there, did all this Shakespeare, did all this theater to go not do theater. <laughs> and they were like, well, you might as well go now with your youth. And, you know, and so I did that. And uh, That's a good way of thinking, though. Most people go and study like me <clears throat> me go and study something that they don't end up doing yeah. I mean I mean I have a journalism degree but I also studied advertising and I wasted a lot of years working on that and, and I'm money. not doing that yeah right. I mean yeah a lot of money so at least you knew I think yeah. that's smarter yeah get the ball rolling get going with what you want to really do and and you use that you do use everything that you did learn up until that point I'm sure now mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. You which, don't even realize it. Which is kind of weird, though, because if acting didn't or doesn't work out, then I have zero other skills. <laughs> I have no other skills to oh, do anything else. Oh, come on. you got to have one have. skill. <laughs> I Nothing? Have no skills. Can you cook? No, I can't. You do can't nothing. cook. I can cook boil water, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> that, you never know. I think you have a lot of skills. I'm sure you do. Yeah, skills like r rapping skills are. I mean, but I don't like. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think, like, if I had, if something happened and mm -hmm. I couldn't be an entertainer anymore. Plan like, B. The what only plan can. B I could think of would possibly be, like, I mean, I was a waiter before yeah. in okay. college. Like, that's not easy. And that's, that, that's always, like, pretty good money, it's you a, know. And it's hard. It's a pain in the yeah. ass. You remember these orders and then you have to, yeah, like, serve them. I probably would just go them back and, doing ugh. that to be an, a yeah. server. All right. Like, my essence page. Let's just not get you to plan B. Let's keep yeah, you on plan A because you're doing well A, so baby. far. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like the A day. We're in Studio A. 
We're on plan A. A. My name's Ashley a. with an A. I mean. And I'm saying A. I, and you're saying A. <laughs> it was, this was all meant to be. I really feel it. Right. Uh, okay. So, you now moved to L.A. How many years ago was this about? 14. Okay. And that yeah. was, how was the adjustment to L.A.? I mean, I know for me it was, like, beyond shocking. It took me, like, two years just to figure out, like, just how to be like around these people because everybody is just so different than I'm from Boston So everybody's so different. So what was it like for you adjusting to just people are different here? Yeah, not bad or good. They're just com like completely different people Well people I mean people are different and people are people and I'm like a people person like I feel like I you know I can adapt well with that, but I the transition for me was y unique because um I came here, I was staying on uh, two friends' couch that I went to undergrad with. And a month after I got here, someone told me about an audition called The Kennedys at Sony Studios and that I should go. And I'm like, well, I don't have an agent. I don't have a car. I don't like, you know, yeah. I don't know where it is. Because, right. <laughs> uh, you know, I had only been here a month. But I got a ride. Uh, a friend took me. And I just posed as a courier and told him I was making a delivery, and I ended up getting the audition. And right no place, way. right time, I got the part, like on the CBS pilot as a series regular. And so a month after I got Wait, here, the, I got oh, everything. I can't even right now. This is one of those stories, like when Lana Turner got discovered and found in front of a fountain or whatever. That's what this was. This, this is, is like the paper. this is a real story. This really happened. This really happened. That's crazy. Yeah. That, Everybody in the world wants to move to L.A. and have that happen to I them. I know, right? And listen, here's the funny thing about that. When I lived in Detroit, when I was like 14, between like 13 and 16, I always dreamt of moving to Los Angeles. But my dreams always were the same way, that I was going to be landing and see the L.A. Houses and stuff, and I was gonna land in LA, and someone was just gonna see me and be like, You are a star! Come here, what's your name? And I had this dream over and over again. And then as I got older, when I got like 16, my brain, I remember specifically in my dream that happened, right? And it was like, Come on, man, what about the reality? You gotta pay bills, you gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. And every time that came into my head that, you know, that that can't actually happen in real life, my my brain would be like, ah, shut up, shut up, shut up, let me go back to my dream that I'm just gonna get discovered as soon as I get there. And ultimately, that's what ended up happening. I was here a month, it was my first audition, and that got me an agent, that got me my own place, that got me doing what? legit work. Oh I never had God. to go through extra work or co-stars or any you of the so stuff spoiled. that, like, yeah, it was kind of, because all my friends from college, they all were here too. And they were all trying, and they're all, you know, putting all of their effort forth of just trying to even get an agent and I got here a month and you know I was like legitimized like that soon and then you know I just basically been able to continue to work like consistently since then I think that is so interesting that you say, going back to that, I think it was more of a premonition, um, your dream, how you kind of would say, oh, no, no, no. Like you, it's almost like. No I think plan that, B. Right. I didn't want a plan right. B. Right. And people that, I think people stop themselves out of fear of like, oh, no, you can't do it because be realistic. You know, people always say to themselves, you need, a, you know, you need to have something to fall back on or you can't go to that audition. If you miss, you know, your job, then you might get fired. And so I think mm -hmm. that's what stops people. But it's kind of like you just kind of went all in. You were like, I screw this. I mean, you took a huge risk just to, to lie and get in the audition. I mean, crashing auditions is like the number one no-no, they say. Yeah, but, well, and, but this is also pre-9-11, too, so they, wasn't, they weren't as strict of me getting into the studio. I mean, you couldn't do that now. You I don't, you think, I don't know. Did 9-11 have a lot to do with the studios, you think? Well, yeah, everything changed. All of security of everything that, got like bumped up more, you know. When I did that, they didn't even, it didn't even make sense. I was in the passenger seat. Why would a courier need to have a chauffeur? <laughs> like, it made no sense at all, but they let me on. You got to go give a thank you card to whoever was working that, that security yeah, area. Yeah, I know, right? And, 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 thank you for being so oblivious to life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what happened was, so so I got there, you know, um, we we're looking for the place. You know, I've never been in any studio of anything, so I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. And, I, you know, I had these headshots. We find a place, and I see two rooms. I see the um, 
casting director's room first, and then an assistant, a casting director. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, we want to we want to get to the, the casting director. We won't get this assistant. The assistant go tell us to get out. The assistant comes out. He's like, can I help you? I was like, yeah, we're here to audition for the Kennedys. Um, and I was like, we, we just got here. We're not even auditioning yet. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, here, here's my, my headshot resume. And she looked at it, and she saw 30 theater credits and all of this school stuff, but no real right. stuff. And, she, and, and no agent. And she said, are you representing yourself? And I was like, yes. And she was like, okay. And then my, my friend who I was with, who actually had an agent, um, he, he gave her his too. And I was like, dude. And she and she was like, okay, thank you. So we left, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, we're on the lot now. Let's just go to all of the rooms <gasps> and pass out our headshots. And he already was embarrassed because she kind of like, yeah, her, the, right, like right. the way she said it wasn't like super friendly. It's kind of like, right. get the fuck out of here. Right. You know what I mean? Um, like most casting people will. Yeah, right? And right. he felt embarrassed by that because he had an audition. I mean, he had an agent going out on real audition. He's like, look, you need to do this on your own time. I'm not doing that. But so we left. Didn't and a week you. later, a week later, we both got a call to come in, um, except mine just kept going further and further. That's so cool. Yeah. So. That's an amazing story. I mean, that's got to give you a big confidence boost. I know I've done a lot of casting workshops in the past. When I when I came out here, I wanted to act, too, for like five minutes. And um, and I remember them saying, well, if you when you book your first thing, once you book that, for some reason, you get on like a ra- Like, you just keep booking because your confidence goes mm-hmm. up so high. Yeah, that, so that's you true. must have been like on cloud nine. Like, yeah. we're just. I mean, I was on cloud nine, and like this, the story of just even how it happened is crazy because in the testing like so all right i don't you, you guys didn't ask me all these questions but That's i'll right. tell you this so i just want to tell you you know to make it on tv on a successful show is like almost as difficult as getting hit by lightning because so much has to go right i mean you gotta you gotta have an agent how do you get an agent you need credits to get an agent. So it's already it's right there. It's like, no matter what, what the hell? Like, right. how can I get an agent when I don't have nothing and I need an agent to get stuff, right? So so they're already, that's tough. The agent submits you. They don't have to accept you, you know? Mm-hmm. So you got to get the audition, right? Mm-hmm. You got to go there. You got to impress the, the cast and director. Then on top of that, that to call you back, you got to be one of the, they may see like, I don't know, 30 people, 50 people, the, the cast and director. Then they'll whittle that down to like maybe 10. So you get called back by the director. Director said, okay, well, I like this guy, this guy, and this guy. Then you got a network test, you know? Um, producers, where, right? In front of producers yeah, at this producers, point? And, and and so during the, the network testing part, which is like three of us left, it's like three different types, right? Mm-hmm. The the funny part is there was a guy, <laughs> there was a guy there who, I mean, I was just here. I didn't know nothing about nothing. So I was telling my story. I was like, I you know, I just snuck into the audition. I got this. <laughs> One guy was happy. He was like, dude, that's badass. That's awesome. And the other guy was like, wait, so you're not even supposed to be here? And I was like, I, mean, I don't know. I guess not, right? You are. I can't believe you'd even say anything. I mean, I was just, I was, because I just got here. I don't know yeah, nothing right, about right. nothing. This is my first audition, right? right? right. And, and then this guy, he was like, you know, so I'm telling him the story of how I found thought about the audition and it was because a guy that I work with in the Idaho Shakespeare Festival the summer before told me when I come to LA he got breakdowns and he'll help me out right Mm -hmm. so he was like you did the Idaho Shakespeare Festival and I was like yeah I did it in the summer before I went to graduate school he was like huh (laughs) and to come to find out I had taken his job because he was supposed to go to Idaho to do that Shakespeare Festival that summer and they picked me and I went and did that. It was and so, so meant he was to be. finding out that. And then he really got mad because now I'm here in another position to take a job. But like, and, no, and I'm I know, not sad but or nothing. But it's but it just shows you, even though that stuff wasn't too good that was happening at that moment, it must have been like, wow, I really am in the right place. So like all these weird pieces are kind of falling yeah. together. Yeah. It's it, it, how 
it's it's the irony. Yeah, is, the it, irony is crazy. But look, so you got all those steps, right? And then after they decide to pick me, right? So they choose. So the, and and the test is like three. You gotta you gotta do a workshop. Then you gotta do a, a studio. Then network. These are all three different mm -hmm. auditions. That's all in the same day with like fifty people staring at you while you do this. So then when they actually choose you and you get the part, you shoot the pilot. Then you still have to make it like because the test audience have to say okay this works because if they don't like you they'll recast you and they'll go on with the pilot without you because that's happened to me before you know so after that then they still have to try and pick the show up how much do they pick it up for maybe six episodes maybe 13 you shoot those then you still have to wait and make sure you get certain numbers for it to stay so it's like all of this stuff has to happen for you to make a TV show that gets on TV it is the next time I look at somebody that's on TV, I'm going to say, wow, that person went through hell went and through back. Hell they deserve back. a raise. They do. <laughs> that's crazy. You know, that's so, a lot. It's a lot. It, it, it's it's good that you said that, though. I think people don't know that. Processes and they didn't get picked up. <laughs> but that's okay. But it's okay because it's a credit. It's on yeah, your resume now. It's a credit, you know? and and it and it got me. You know, it got me an agent because I didn't even have an agent. They asked me, did I have someone to negotiate my deal? And I had met with an agent who told me you need to go do student director films or something so you can have a reel. And then when CBS called them and said, you know, Paige Kennedy, they were like, why? And they was like, we want him to test for this network show. And they were like, yes, we love Paige Kennedy. Oh. You know, whatever. That's how the game works. And so I went with them. I stayed with them for like 10 years. And, and you know, that was that. That that was that. That's pretty cool. That'd be good if you just ended like that. But you, have, you didn't stop there. So now you you have a lot of other TV credits. So, I mean, yeah, I mean like a lot. A and lot. It, right, and right now, uh, congratulations. So January 22nd was the premiere of um, your latest show. Yeah, Backstrom. Yep, Backstrom. So what do you play on that? I play Officer Frank Moto. He's a ex mixed martial arts fighter who turned into a police officer, and he has ambitions to be a detective. And he is, uh, you know, and he's in the Special Crimes Unit, which is a unit compiled of specialists of their field to help um, Backstrom, who played by Rain Wilson, um, who is this misanthropic, racist, uh, misogynist character, to get convictions on his brilliant detective work. So he's a brilliant detective, but he's a terrible cop. So the way he goes about doing it is wrong. And so sometimes the people get off. And so they put this team behind him to help him, you know, get mm -hmm. stuff that sticks. And I'm I'm like the muscle on the team. I'm like, you know, like the heart of the team and mm -hmm. and my through line is I'm constantly trying to be detective like the rest of them like the were the rest of the people are are detectives and I'm the only uniform cop but I'm working to you know be in a plain clothes how do you adjust to that role like how did you get prepared to even do that role because it's different lingo I mean just the way yeah. cops talk and detectives yeah. talk this is the first time that I've gotten to play uh, a police officer so actually this is the first time I've been on the right side of the law <laughs> right? so it's been 14 That's years great. Um, congratulations other stuff, you, know? <laughs> you um, have to learn like everything even how to like just the way that they walk, the way, way they walk, the way the they carry way they, their gun. They 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 watch stuff like mm -hmm. how they are in the room, you know. Right. So I have to learn all of that. But mostly, you know, what was interesting about this character? Usually, people hire me to be that. Ah! Like I'm there to tear shit up, like yeah. on weeds. You know, they brought me in to be this destructive character. You know, that people end up loving. So I stayed around for a while. But you know, and, and on Blue Mountain State, I'm like this rambunctious, crazy, wild rookie quarterback who's like thinks he's the shit and he does all this crazy wild fun stuff and so I'm usually like big in your face that's what you know you get me for uh I'm never like the boyfriend or the regular guy you know the what I mean boy next door yeah right. I'm, not, I'm not that and so right. this character's a little different because he's more grounded you know he's more centered and so it, it's different for me because my natural inclination and my innate way of of acting is to be bam you mm -hmm. know and, and well, he's, theater. He's I mean, more, that's yeah. projecting and, and he's more subdued than that he's more real he's more you know what I mean and so so that's been a, a, a change and I think that that's going to be something that my audience and particularly my younger audience like social media wise are going to have to get used to because they're so used to me being like all over the place. Well I think it's interesting because you being on TV for the few classes that I took uh, 
acting for the camera on TV, you have to know exactly where your camera angle is because you you may think that it's you know an extreme close up, but really it's it's pretty far away, and you need to, yeah, you need to know. adjust everything. So how did you get mm -hmm. used to that? Not ever having. I mean, you obviously at this point know how to do it, but in the beginning, yeah, at the, at the couldn't beginning, have been easy. at the beginning, I did have to learn because I came from theater, so everything was just big. Yeah, you know, and I had to learn that jazz hands you know, and yeah, it's super big. <gasps> but then once they're like right there, then it doesn't work if I'm the same big as I was in a while, you know. And so that's something that I had to learn, and that's something that you have to ask because they don't just necessarily tell you. So to this day, I still ask my my DP. I, I still ask like what what's the shot so that I know how to level what I'm doing. How, how are you with memorizing your lines? Well, I used to be super good. I used to be, you know, in college, um, I was the only person in my school to be off book for every play that I've ever been in before wow. the, at the first read-through. So That's on the first read-through, whether I have two lines or whether I'm the star with all the lines, I'm off book completely before I read-through. Because I wanted to have all of the time to like relate and react, and, and I don't know, memorization came good to me and easy to me because I had been rapping for so long, and I used oh, to I used to make my yeah. raps without writing them. I didn't write my raps; I make them in my head and I keep them there. So I have like a hundred raps that are just stored in my brain that I just made and and kept there. We need to. What you have to? What's your IQ? It has to be super nah, high. Nah, I don't it know. It has to be. You should no. get it done because the fact that you can. <laughs> first of all, Shakespeare itself is just so. so so difficult. Yeah. The fact that you, I just feel like you're very different. Like you have the just the capacity to memorize that fast. That's not something everybody has the ability to but do. It's I mean, a muscle though. It's a it muscle. Is a muscle. And yeah. I, I realized yeah. it's a muscle when I got here and I had just like normal stuff that I would play. Because before I was playing kings, I was playing dads, mm -hmm. I was playing, you know, now I play stuff that I would play. And so like the dialogue is so much more real and easy for me that I lost the ability to to learn lines as efficiently as I used to because in school it was a constant thing I had to always learn so many lines yeah. all the time you know and now you know so I, I find it a little more difficult now because the muscle is not mm -hmm. working in the same way but but you know, those things were in my long-term memory. So, like, even right now, I could go for 45 minutes straight of just saying Shakespeare, of, like, just monologues that I've learned in college that I still just have in my brain that just come out like songs. So there are songs you learned when you were, like, 10. Oh, yeah, I learned all the that, all the, all the books of the Bible. <laughs> yeah, like, right? We had and, to. And you don't have to think about I, it. You don't, I don't have to think about just, it, no. It just comes out of your mouth. And, and yeah. actually, if you were to try to think about it, you might mess you up. Forget, so it's yeah. just a part of the brain. That just lets it spill out, right? Yep. Well, that's how the Shakespeare is for me. I don't have to think about what the next line is or what I'm saying. It just spills out. And if I were to think about it, then I might lose it. So, you know, like I said, I know that that it's a muscle. That's really, really interesting. And, and that, you know, soap operas, people on soap operas, they have a. Uh a very easy um, because they do it every day. Yeah, right. You know, it's, so it's they easier have that muscle, for them. They have the right, muscle down. They, they just have to learn so much. So much in so little time. It's yeah. really impressive. So now you are at this point. Um, you have a lot of TV credits and, and you're doing so well. What makes you say, "I want to go online and do this online"? Well, <laughs> that was an interesting thing that started. <sighs> Well, I was always on Twitter since Twitter first started. I was on MySpace yeah, I before because I, like, yeah. I, you know, I put my music out on there. MySpace? Yeah, Do you still have that? MySpace? No. Of course, I remember MySpace. <laughs> I had the coolest I MySpace love, ever. I know. I had that. My MySpace was the. Yeah. Mine was amazing. Mine was like hot pink with like little like sparkles everywhere, and <laughs> I, I was. You used to have a whole bunch of comments. Whole bunch of comments. Yep. That was. Do cool. you remember who your first? Uh, who was in your top eight? Like the first person you remember? <laughs> I don't. Ah. Do you, why, you, why you have a really good memory? No, no I don't. No, no, I'm just wondering. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. No, but, but what, so so what happened was um, three years ago, I got interested in YouTube because um, I wanted more followers on Twitter. You know, I love okay. Twitter so much, and I was like, all right, well, if I do YouTube, maybe I can find my fans that know me from movies, and then they'll follow me on there, and then I can tell them to go to Twitter. Oh. So that was my like initial thing of trying to do like stuff on YouTube 
and I found out I found out like all type of stuff about YouTube that I didn't know. I didn't know people had channels. I didn't know that people were rich off of just being YouTubers. I didn't know I didn't know any of that. I thought YouTube were for cats and babies. When was this? What year about? What this was like three years ago, three or four years ago. Okay. That 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 I came to the realization of this because typically you ask an actor about YouTube, they're like, why the hell I'm gonna go do something free when I get paid that what YouTube? Are you serious? You know and then I figured out that YouTube was a business, and I started getting into it, and I joined this this uh, company called Maker Studios, and I start producing content, like, every week, and, you know, and that turned into something else that turned me into like a social media type of thing and then I met a I met a, a friend of mine King Batch and we started doing YouTube together and then he found Vine and I used to go do his Vine videos with him and he was growing so fast on Vine when we were still struggling on YouTube you know we hadn't even hit a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube and we had been doing it for years and and he got 100,000 followers on Vine in like three weeks. And I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, what the hell is this? Right. Like, and really? So, what the hell? So, when, oh my God. so he would have me jump in his Vines and I would do his Vines and stuff. And I was like, man, maybe I should start this too myself. So I came late. I came in the game late on Vine for myself. You know, I still had a, a flip phone. <laughs> like, I, you know, I came in the game, like, super late. And then uh, we we made it a business, man. We, we, we wanted it to be big, and he was already bigger than all our friends. He was, like, growing and becoming huge, and, and he was, like, the fastest growing person on Vine. And, I, and, and so every day we decided from 9 to 5, uh, we were going to Vine, and we would go Vine See, and do like is, four a day. Oh my God, that is so interesting. That's it's commitment. not easy to commit to that. And it's not. I have a friend. You may have met her when you came in, and she and I would like it's. It would be so difficult to find the time to, not even to find the time to make sure that we did it. Yeah. Because you just there's a hundred things that come up, and then it's like, well, let's do it tomorrow, and then yeah. and so it. You're busy in your real life. I give you so much credit just the fact that you actually went through and followed through with that. Yeah. That's not and, and then having to put everything together yeah. and then edit it. It's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's, and you watch it a zillion times it's before you put it. Work. But you know what? It, it was you, easier than crazy. YouTube because you could just do it faster. Like, it was yeah. only six seconds. Six seconds. And, and even in, in the editing process of it, it's, like, way easier than having to edit a five-minute video. You yeah. know? And, and then you got more. You got more out of it because the 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 fans were more engaged than they were on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um and so what I did was I didn't want to, you know, stop my YouTube channel. So what I did was I just decide to put my Vine compilations out on YouTube. And so that way my, my YouTube channel still stays relevant because I still put out content, which is like killing two edit birds down. with one stone. You kind of edit your videos down. I just take a whole bunch of my Vines and I put them all together <gasps> and make a YouTube video. Oh, you do it that way. I thought you meant put your YouTube videos on Vine. No, 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 no. Okay. Hell no, you can't do that. No, but yeah, but you I did cut the it other down way, so, so I have stuff to, Interesting. to, to put out on YouTube. And, and how long did you see uh, a growth, a steady growth? Like, I mean, you start Vine, and like within how many days did you start to say, "Wow, I mean, some, this is this is big." Well, every just constant, like you know. Uh, I mean, I can go back in my phone, but like it was happening quickly. Like you would get like thousands of followers a day. And I'm like, how is that? I've been on Twitter for, like, years. And it's, like, right? so difficult to right. get three followers, you know? Yes. But on Vine, you were just getting thousands a day. And I'm like, what? How do you, how do you just find a thousand, like, 2,000 new people a day? Or You know what I mean? And so... That was like motivating, like the fact, like um, just growing absolutely. that fast. Absolutely, of course. It's like if you went to the gym and the second day you went to the gym, you already saw a ab, like I single would keep ab. Going. You saw I one, want another oh, one. I got an ab. Yeah. Man, let me get some more. But that's, but that's, that's easier to get more. Um, 
to get more driven once you already have followers, but just to see that you did this every day, starting Vine, kind of from, not from the bottom because your friend already had a following, but still, you yeah. did it. You committed in the very beginning. Yeah. That is so impressive. Right. And obviously, it just goes to show that that pays off. I don't know so much now because it's so, I mean, there's just so many people on Vine. Yeah. I think you hit it at the right time. Yeah, I did hit it at the right time. And, and you know, like, I'm never going to be, like, you know, one of the top. I mean, I guess I'm uh, kind of top. I tried I'm two like, and a half million. Yeah, I got two and a half million. Oh, just two and a half million? Okay. Yeah, but I'm I still have, like... I have, like, seven. So, I think... <laughs> I have, like, seven. And I have, like, a hundred loops. So... <laughs> Let's just talk about that for a second. Well, no, I mean, I'm like, I'm like number 61. So, like, if there was like a list of, so I'm like number 61. Yeah, and you're like a crazy percent. Like, there's nobody in the world that's number 61 that has, like, <laughs> or number 60 or number 30. I mean, right. that's just insane. Well, I mean, it's just fun for me, you know, and I, I wanted to, and, and the main thing is I want to get the youth, I want to get the young audience because if you get a young audience, then as you get older and they get older, they stay your fans. Yes. You know, and so then I have older generation, my generation, the younger generation, you know, and that that way you stay relevant. And so, you know, that's why I did that. And then and and I get to put my son and Yeah, and tell me about your son. Is he is he your only son or your only kid or No, I have a, I have a son and a daughter. Okay. Um and but but my son lives with me and so How old? He's 16. Oh, and, he is? Yes. You look like you're 16. That's hey. weird. So you guys See, hang out, and they're myself. like, who's the well, dad? Yeah, we, <laughs> well, I, I, honestly, we do hang out, and they, 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 even the fans think that he's my brother, and I, yeah. we just play this role that he's my son. But, right. no, I mean, I got I got him involved in it because he's just been a ham since he was a little kid. Like ever I wonder who he takes after. Yeah, I, I wonder. Because <laughs> we'll never find out. Know. So uh yeah, so I got him involved with it and, and, and you know, he, he, he does all right on it. He he has his 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 people who like him and you know he's So you got him on there now. and he's yeah. got his following and everything now? Yeah. Now how do I don't know much you're allowed to say, but like in terms of making money, um, is it a lot of product pr placement that they do? Like they like you sponsor like a Doritos or something bag or yeah. is that how it is? So or? it's just like YouTube where you do you do brand deals. Well, I personally don't do brand deals. I Really? Yeah, I I I'm not interested. Why? Because I don't want to confuse my audience. I don't want them to think that I'm doing Vine because like now that's my job or whatever. My job is I'm an actor and I do Vine as a hobby and I do Vine to, to generate more interest in Paige Kennedy so that then I can have them go support what I really do, which is TV and film. And so, huh. you know, because a lot of times when you do brand deals, like some of the fans, like they don't like them, you know, they're like, ah, he sold out, blah, blah, blah. But me personally, I just didn't want to confuse them mm -hmm. in, in that sense that they know that I'm an actor and this is like my hobby to do Vine. Now, I have a lot of friends who make a huge living off of doing Vine. But right. I don't need so to you don't do make that. any money doing your vines. No. You don't make a dime. No. You decide that you don't want to make money doing vines because Correct. you don't want. So your fans, I mean, you must be number one in terms. I mean, this can't be any. <laughs> no, but I don't think there's anybody else on Vine that would say no to money. I mean, because all these people, I yeah. hate to say it, but these people that have enough time all day to make videos don't have another job, I'm right, guessing. And right. they just became famous from doing that. Yeah, and they make and they thousands the money. of dollars per Vine. But me, like, I, you know. Who I else make, doesn't do them? A few, do you know? Are you, like, literally the only person? Uh... I don't do them. Afonso McCauley, who is another actor, a friend of mine, he doesn't do brand deals. And Batch doesn't really do brand deals unless they're like super huge, then then he'll do them. You know? What are you, your fans must be think that you are just the coolest person ever like the fact that you're like giving up money to make sure that they have a really cool experience on vine i mean what i get, maybe you know i just I, I really like to engage in my fans and so there's a there's another platform there's called snapchat and snapchat is like awesome i love snapchat a lot i'm like snapchat kind of like it takes up my entire day wait what i don't even have snapchat am i missing out on like the coolest thing ever well it, it's Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. For me, it's cool what? because I get to produce content that makes people happy and laugh. 
And but so, what is Snap? So wait, Snapchat is. Oh my God, I'm like I look like I'm like a 55 year old woman. Like, <laughs> what is Snapchat? <laughs> but really, I don't. Okay, I know you take a picture, right? And then it doesn't last for very long. Is that all? Yeah. So you- Snapchat is uh, a platform where you could take a picture or you could take up to 10 seconds of video, and you can upload that to a thing called My Story, and everything you do just kind of piles up in seconds. Oh. And then you whoever adds you can watch this or they can tap through it you know as your story and you can draw on there you can make pictures with and you can do text and you can do like all this fun cool little stuff uh and and that's the platform now previously before snapchat got my story Snapchat was basically just so you could like show your tits. And, well, I was gonna like, say, can't people screen grab that? Because yeah, I would like, totally screen like, grab yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it was for that. Like, you could send them here. I'll send you this two second video, and it's gonna disappear. So right. you could just see it. But then, you know, you can screenshot it. But if you screenshot it, it tells the other person you screenshot it. But now oh, they have third. Shit. They have third party apps now that people open. So you can go to like Snap Up and like. They won't know that you oh. got the picture. So anyway, that's what it was used for primarily. Right. Like I think at first, until this this invention of uh, my story happened, and in my story, it just became you. And so me, I use it for a lot of stuff. For like a vlog, it's kind of like I vlog my life, you know, in a funny way. Sometimes you can like do actual real stories where you like, you know, make skits, but it's like in the moment. So it's mm-hmm. like. You have to do it like right there and add them as you go. And it only lasts on my story for 24 hours. So you put a story up and within 24 hours, everything just starts to to fall off. So at every 24 hours, whatever's Mm -hmm. the last thing that falls off. How do you keep up with your Vine and your YouTube and your Twitter and your Snapchat? I mean, you can't, like, you could literally, I mean, First of all, you need a lot of the megabytes for your iPhone, right? You're you probably right. get like the big so one, the 128 much. gig, or like so the 164. Much. It's so difficult. And, but for me, the, what takes the most, it doesn't take as much time to do Vine. It doesn't take as much time to do the Snapchats. But because I want to engage with my fans, what takes the most time for me is I watch all of the snaps I get. And so I get thousands a day. And so I'm constantly nonstop on my phone looking, opening the right. Snapchats that my fans send me. Oh my God. <laughs> so that's what takes the most time. It's just like, like my thumbs are just higher at the end of the day. But because they love me so much, it makes me love them. It's like, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I love my fans, especially on Snapchat. So I can win a thumb war. Against yeah, you, you, probably. Yeah, because my thumb Chances is are. exhausted. Cool. What are we going to wage now? <laughs> so do, now? Can you make an income off Snapchat? Or they, you- they're starting to have branding companies are starting to see that, you know, there's money in this and you can make uh, income. Like, so there are certain people who get an astronaut nomical amount of views and they can do brand deals for a company. I don't think it's as much as like Vine mm-hmm. yet because I don't think they're they're they've grasped onto it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know that that's something that certain people get. What could you give for advice to someone who wants to do what you're doing right now? They want to put themselves out there. They don't know where to start. They don't have a ton of time, say, or say they have they do have tons of time. But what would you say for somebody that wants to just take that risk and is it even at this point realistic for them to try to make an income well here's what I'll say um, you know we live in a day and age now that the every man can be a celebrity so whoever you are wherever you are you can now be famous before you have to be some big actor that's living in LA but now the 13 year old kid that lives in Baltimore can be more famous than some actors you know yep. and so what I would suggest is that you find what makes you interesting, what makes you funny, and to put out content. And and to be patient because if you don't have someone 
like if you if you're starting from the bottom and you don't have a bigger viner to get you seen, then it's going to take a little mm-hmm. time, right? Yeah. But if you decide I want to make unique and interesting content, especially on Vine, then you can grow fast because you know these new platforms, everything's open. You know, everybody's just doing what everybody else does. If you take and do something different and new and fresh, then people are going to come to you to see that because they don't get to see that from anyone else. You know, and so I would just be patient and I would be diligent in putting out content constantly you know I I would be consistent Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what we were we were doing four vines a day and then uh, vine changed and so you know as vine changed we had to change so then you could only do like two a day where it would make it onto the popular page and then it became one Mm -hmm. and so that's why you know you do like one vine a day now because it can only be up there one time but Mm -hmm. before you could just do four vines you're trying to grow you're trying to put out as much content as possible Mm -hmm. and so that's what I would suggest that, that you just be patient and you be diligent and and, uh, making content. I think that's good advice. What do you, uh, anything you want to share with your fans before we go that you just, that maybe you think that they didn't know about you that you want to share or just that you want to reiterate something uh, to them? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I just, I'm somebody who wants to like dibble and dabble in everything. Like, I feel like I have like creative ADD. And so, you know, I want to be in movies, I want to be in commercials, TV. I want to be in YouTube, Vine, Instagram, all of that stuff. You write a book. Yeah, I, and I that, I want to do that too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, if anybody's that's that's interested in me, you know, I'm Paige Kennedy on all social media. Um, you know, I engage with my fans, um, and I'm hoping that you guys watch Backstrom Thursday night. It's really yeah, really important. Yeah, it's on Fox. Yeah, it's on Fox. What it time? comes on at nine o'clock. Okay. Um, you know, I'm really excited about this show, and the only way that it sticks around is if the fans come support it. You know, we have an uphill battle because this week Scandal returns in our same time slot, and so we had this uphill battle, but I feel like, you know, through social media, you know, we could take over the world, and that's why I embrace my social media fans, so they come and show me love back. So come watch Backstrom Thursday yes. at 9 o'clock. you have to watch it Thursday nights. Cool. I am... I just think that you are so awesome. You have such uh, a cool story. I would have never known any of those things about you, and I, I just give you so much credit. I'm just I'm really impressed by how you stuck through with everything you've ever done, and you really you've it doesn't seem like you've ever given up on anything. Nah. So that's that's really you're very inspiring. There's a lot of people. <laughs> I can you. see why your fans are your fans. I'm a fan. Hey. We're all a fan here hey, after us. Hey, me on Twitter today. I was happy. I, I was did. Like, Ooh, <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank and you. Um, so we get, everything's on Paige Kennedy, all your social everything's media. Everything's on Paige Kennedy. Cool. Twitter, Snapchat, Vine, awesome. Instagram. And we're going to, he will, um, I will send it to you later. You will uh, send out this link if you want so people can yeah, see this if definitely. they missed it uh, right now. And um, you can find me everywhere uh, at Ashley Daniels and Miss Ashley Daniels for Instagram. And we'll see you next time. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 